Welcome to the Talent Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kira Dent, and I had this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create a team. Welcome to the Dental A-Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A-Team listeners. This is Kira and you guys. All right, here's a skill that I think you're all going to want to implement after COVID is over and you guys are back in the practice. And the reason why this is coming up as a really popular topic is because we're trying to think of how do we not bottleneck around the front desk, okay? So this is something that I love that I've implemented in several practices that truly is something that just makes the office super efficient. However, people get really gun shy and scared of it to implement because that's not how we've always done it. Well, high five, you guys. You can thank the pandemic for giving you an opportunity to pivot and change and do things that are unconventional, unlike any way you've ever done it before. Because guess what? Our world looks different than it has ever looked before. Things are going to change in ways that we've never, ever seen them change before. So this is going to be one of those areas you guys implement it, try it. It will make you guys not have the bottleneck around the front, less patient interaction all the way around and able to simplify the process for everyone. And that is treatment planning in the back and taking payments. Okay, don't shut off the podcast. I know you're freaking out. Clinical team taking payments. I hear your fear. I hear the anxiety. You guys know that anxiety is just fear of a made up future. I'm going to say that again. Anxiety is just fear of a made up future. So you don't know if it's really going to be terrible. You don't know if the patients are going to be like, oh my gosh, clinical team taking payments. What is happening to the world? You don't know that. That's your anxiety. It hasn't happened. It's a made up future. You don't know. You're projecting. You're getting all stressed out and worried about something that you're making up that you don't even know. So before you say no, hang on, just think, could this work? And if it could, could I make this work? All right. I know it's super hard. Sometimes people say, hey, Kira, if you'll just do intermittent fasting and I'm like, zip it. I like to eat. I've not eaten for several years of my life. I enjoy eating now. I don't want to do that. So I just tune everything else out. Instead of being like that, sometimes like, but Kara, if you were just to try intermittent fasting one time, just see, see how you felt. Okay, I'll try one time. That's all I'm asking is for you guys to just see if you could make this work. And I'm going to walk you through if you want to try this. So treatment planning and taking payments in the back. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So let's think about it. If a perfect world, let's just imagine, for example, a patient comes in, The front office is freaking killing it with their insurance verification. They have all their information in. Our software is great. It's all up to date so we can have accurate, as accurate as can be, treatment estimates. And we've trained the back office on how to read this. Don't worry, front office. I know you get panicked because like, oh, shoot, if we're not doing treatment plans, then what's our, what is our responsibility? It's fine. There will be another responsibility that's super important. You can get, there's so many things. Don't even stress about that. That's living in scarcity, not abundance. Don't you fret promise you there will be a thousand things that will come up. So what we do is the front office, imagine if you will with me, a patient comes in, they get checked in. In a perfect world, they also get a payment pre-collected because we've already talked to them, told them that when they come back, we are going to be collecting payment as soon as they arrive. That way they can just easily leave at the end of the appointment. Okay. So they already know, come prepared to pay 323 when I see you next. They come in, we collect 323. Don't worry. I know you feel weird about it. A lot of you have never done this. It's totally fine. Before you have judgments, just role play with me. Imagine if this was an option. You don't have to do every aspect of this. It just works really well. So they come in, we pre-collect, they go to the back, they get their treatment done. Now, if it's hygiene, they come in, they go to hygiene. Um, The hygienist can schedule them for their next visit. If time permitting, don't worry, hygienist, I'm not saying you need to do all the treatment planning. Don't fret about that. I know you're busy, but hygienist, you just take a payment for their fluoride. So it's easy. Hey, Kira, 
we just did that quick $35 floor ride today. I'm going to actually just run your card back here. Make it so simple for you. That way next time you don't, we don't even have to wait at the front. You can just leave. Be easy. And also we're going to, we're going to, um, if this is the card you'd like to keep on file, then that way you don't even have to bring your card out next time. That is convenience and efficiency if I've ever heard it. So that's the area for hygiene. For assistance, if there's an exam, we actually treatment plan and present it in the back. Hygienist, you can do this too. I'm not saying go full bore and go this way. So in a perfect world, the assistant treatment plans, they present it, they present all the financing options, they schedule it, talk to the patient, they put the amount in that's going to be collected at the next visit, patient leaves, we are a smooth running ship. So we make sure that the front desk is checking when they come in to ensure that we're collecting all the balances before they even go to the back. The back office treatment plan schedules, presents that to them, take the payment for fluoride. Um, assistants could even take the payment for, let's say we add treatment. They could do that in the back and then patients are able to leave and we don't have to bottleneck around the front. Just imagine how efficient that would be. Just imagine how great that'd be for your patients. I know you have a thousand reasons this won't work. I'm asking you to think of the thousand reasons why this could and should work. Guys, this is magical. So what I'm going to say is, all right, let's break this down. Let's help you guys set up treatment planning in the back. Treatment planning in the back. You've got to role play that out. I am a huge, huge, huge proponent that when you're going to treatment plan in the back, we schedule first. So doctor comes in, does our exam of NDTR. Next visit, date, time. Kira, I need to get you back for a crown. I want to see you in two weeks for an hour. All right. He told me crown, two weeks, one hour. Beautiful. Assistant then says, Kira, beautiful. Let's get you set in doctor's schedule. Um, it looks like he wants to see you back in two weeks. Um, I've got Wednesday at 3 p.m. Let's reserve that time for you. Perfect. Yeah, that works great. Thanks. How much is this going to cost? No problem. We'll go over that for sure. Let's chat about that. If they ask first, how much is that going to cost? No problem. We just get you squared away in doctor's schedule because that's the trickiest part. And then we'll talk about finances. No big deal. Okay. So then after that, you pull out the iPad. My favorite, you guys, I will tell you three different ways that you can treatment plan this. My favorite preferred way is going to be using Flex or Medento. If you have Open Dental, if you've got other ones, it's cool. Don't worry about it. They might integrate. I'm not sure if they will or won't. It's awesome, you guys. This is so rad. And I don't get any help. If you guys want a discount, talk to Medento. Tell them Cure Dent sent you. You will get a discount. Flex, just use them. They're great. So Either one of them, I don't care what you use or how you use it. Either one, it truly is on an iPad so we can wipe this down with COVID. You can wipe the iPad down. And what you can do is it's gonna be so awesome. It pulls it down, it pulls it straight from Open Dental and it says, okay, how do we wanna pay? I wanna pay in full, I wanna pay three months or 12 months and the patient selects it. Talk about, oh, the angels sing, you guys. It's so easy to do it this way. Your back office can do it makes it so simple. They literally say, and I don't, you don't say the words out loud. Okay, Kira, it looks like your total for this portion, for this appointment for the crown will be, point to it, it's going to be $1,400. It looks like insurance is estimated to pay, point to our insurance is estimated pay, which means your total is just going to be, and point to the total that I will owe on Wednesday. Notice I said the word just, notice I didn't say the numbers out loud, and notice that I am assuming you're going to do it. Okay, the other option, if you don't want to use Flex or Medento, is you can print straight from the software. Now, this is all contingent on the front office being so proactive and entering insurance plans, having the fee schedules in there, um, getting insurance verification done, because that those pieces are going to help you guys. What I found is even though they're not perfect, what they did for me and for several other people is it gives a confidence that you wouldn't have otherwise. So, even though insurance verification is not 100% accurate and we do our very best, the absolute best we can do, what happens is we're then able to say with confidence, hey, we contacted your insurance and this is what we're estimating them to pay. They're like, well, does my insurance cover it? I can be like, you know what? Based on what we were able to find when we contacted them for you, this is what we're estimating. I always show them what the total is. So I say, if insurance pays nothing, this is what your total max would ever be out of pocket. That eliminates fear for the patient they're then able to move forward. So you guys hopefully can print straight from the treatment plan, um, from the software, or use Flex or Medento. Those are my favorite ways. Notice, I schedule first, then I talk to them, and I say, it looks like your portion, your total for this will be this amount. Insurance is estimated, 
Looks like insurance is estimated. We never, ever promise insurance will pay. Never. You you can't promise that. You don't know. So don't say that. It looks like insurance is estimated to pay this amount. And it looks like your total that will be ex- that will collect when we see you and you check in. You notice you can even say when you check in, looks like you um, will be collecting this amount when we see you or the you'll just be paying X amount when we, when we check you in for your appointment when we see you on Wednesday. So then the patient knows and then just be silent. That's all you have to do. It's going to feel awkward. You're going to sit there. It's okay, guys. They're not rejecting you. <laughs> They're not mad at you. They're just processing. So let them process. They'll either say yes or no. That's what's super nice about Flex and Medento is it takes that awkward pause out of there because payment options are listed right there and they can choose one, two, or three. It's amazing. Then what you do is in the appointment you've already scheduled, you put Kira's planning to pay 343. Um, treatment plan, signed treatment plan is in the doc center. So a patient would sign the treatment plan, which can be done electronically. You can do it with an iPad, wipe it down again. And then after that, the patient's scheduled. We can just walk them out. Now, if they have a copay or something from that day, you can just take the payment there. So let's spin over to where um, an, an assistant can take the payment, especially if we're going to add same day treatment. You can do that in the back with these iPads. There's a lot of ways to do this. I know it sounds scary. Don't worry. It's going to take you more time at the beginning. I promise you because you've never done it. But just like the first time you took an FMX, please remind me how long did it take you to take that FMX or how long did it take you when you first started verifying insurance? How long does it take you today? Stop. No, you're faster. Come on. Of course you're faster. You should be faster. You practiced. That'll be the same thing with presenting treatment plans and accepting money. Um, it, both of those things, they're going to feel clunky. It will take you more time at the beginning, but I promise you it will speed up for you. So after that, hygienist, let's spin over to you. So a patient comes in, let's say they just did a $35 fluoride. I don't like hygienists to have to collect for a lot of other things unless you want fluoride, ClinPro, simple things because think about it, hygienist. How many times do you walk up to the front and do you say, oh, darn it, Kira's all backed up. She has all these different people and I've got to sit here and wait before I can even get this done. It's super inconvenient for you. And it's super inconvenient for the patient. And it's super inconvenient for me when I just need a $35 credit card payment. It's very easy. So hygienist, what you can do is, hey, Kira, let's make your life easy. I can actually just take your credit card back here. We can, we can just get that payment taken care of. And then you don't even have to wait up front because you're done. That's all you need to do. You've already got them scheduled for their next appointment. They're ready to come back. They just need to pay for that fluoride. So hygienist, what you can do is you can take the payment in the back and Open Dental and some other ones, the, some other uh, credit card processors will allow you to keep a credit card on file. And so what you can do is you can actually store that credit card and that way the next time they come in, you just say, okay, Kira, so uh, we're just going to run that card we have on file for $35 today. Is that good? They'll say, yep, no problem. You're done. It's so efficient. <laughs> it's so efficient, you guys. So yes, it feels weird. You guys, the first time I presented a treatment plan, I felt weird. The first time I collected money, I was like, oh gosh, I'm like, okay, I guess I just run this credit card. I don't know what I'm doing. The first time I collected money in dental 18 to coach an office, that was weird. You guys, these things are weird. They're out of your comfort zone. But what happens outside of the comfort zone? Magic sauce, you guys. That's where the magic sauce is. So I am going to strongly advise you guys talk about this in your team. You will be met with resistance. Heck yeah, you will. But at the same time, Let's think of how we could make this happen. And could this be better for our patients? And would this prevent bottlenecking up front? And would this keep less patients up front and in the waiting room, especially during COVID? Is there an opportunity to become a more efficient, more productive, and better patient serving practice through this? The answer is, heck yeah, there is. (laughs) No ifs, ands, or buts. There's absolutely a positive spin that we can take on this. So you guys, I'm going to invite you try this. Try it. Call me. I can't tell you how many offices the dental aid team coaches have implemented this in. You guys, we love it. We love it so much. We implement it in pedo offices, in specialty offices, in general practice offices. We stair-step you guys into it. So it's not full-blown. So if you're a little timid 
or you don't know all the details or you wonder how to do this, give us a call. We can do a team workshop. We can get your whole team on board. We are very good at motivating, inspiring, and helping create a plan to execute this so it's super successful instead of flops. And then we're scared to not implement it again. You guys push the boundaries, push the boundaries. I was talking to one of our team members. She's new to our team. And I called her up the other day and I said, hey, how are you doing? And she's like, good. And I said, I've got to talk to you directly. I feel you're so afraid of failure in our company. And I said, I want us to put a spin on that. And I want you to feel and know that in our company, I expect you to fail and fail successfully. I said, that was a phrase that I heard a few years ago when I was reading an article and it's called failing successfully. And what that means is you should be pushing the boundaries so hard and doing things that just push the limits of anything everyone, anyone's ever done so much so that we fail and we pick ourselves back up because we failed successfully, that we learned something that didn't work and we picked ourselves back up when we found a solution to it. I told her, I said, I will never, ever, ever be upset with you. I promise. Like, because there's always a solution and we can find a solution. And I want you to just have the confidence that I expect you to fail and fail successfully. That's what our company is about. Because how can we be the best if we're not willing to fail? I said, rewrite that definition. What does it mean to fail? And she said that, like, I disappointed everyone, that I let everyone down. And I said, or does it, could it mean that maybe you were trying something new and you found a way that didn't work? So you found a different way to do it. She's like, yeah, that could work. I'm like, how does that feel? She's like, it feels a lot better. I said, great, then let's go with that definition. Let's work with that. So for you guys, don't worry if you fail. Fail successfully. You're never going to know how far you can go unless you push the limits. Push those boundaries, guys. Do things differently. Obviously, do it. Do it ethically and do it legally. But do things differently. Try it. Pivot it, you guys. How do you think we got to the moon? How did we get all the breakthroughs? It was from people trying things differently. Call us, guys. We're happy to help. We love coaching offices. So if you've been teetering on the fence and this is something you want to implement, you want to become one of our jumpstart offices, give us a call. Hello at the dentalyteam.com. That's really not a call. That's an email, but it's cool. <laughs> email us. Hello at the dentalyteam.com. Implement this. Treatment planning in the back and taking payments in the back. Stair step it up. The first step to do is to have hygienists start taking payments for fluoride. Easiest way to implement that and getting the cards on file. Magic phrase, is this the card you'd like to keep on file? Magic phrase right there for you, okay? Assistants, start treatment planning in the back. That means front office, you gotta get your ducks in a row. You've gotta have your insurance plans in place, insurance verification done, fee schedules all implemented, and make sure it's linked up so our plans directly from the software when we present a treatment plan is accurate. There's no fumbling, ugh, so inefficient when I see offices and they're like manually calculating these things out. Stop that. <laughs> Don't do that. Get your fee schedules in. Get the breakdowns in. Use the software for what the software was designed to do. I know it's not always 100% accurate, but man, it can be darn close and it will save you a ton of time and it will give the confidence there. Get those things in place. And maybe assistance, you start treatment planning, maybe one treatment plan a day. Don't go full bore. <laughs> maybe start doing that. At a minimum, assistants are scheduling every single patient in the back. These things can help you guys be way more efficient. At the end of the day, it's new territory. It's a new opportunity. It's a new way to do business. It's a new way to do dentistry. You are on the leading edge of this, and I want you to remember that. It's magical, you guys. It's exciting. It's fun. And it can be so thrilling. So give us a call. Email us, hello at thedentalyteam.com. And I can't wait to see you guys more efficient and better. And then send me your success stories. Let me know. Um, send me your failure stories. Let me know how you failed successfully. Because failing successfully is the only way for you to become the best version of yourself and to be the best practice you could ever be. All right, you guys, go try it out. Let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for being a part of my Dental Team family. Truly, I think about you guys a lot. I think about the content you want to hear. So hop on over to our, our website. Um, go to thedentalyteam.com backslash blog. Super cool. We can't change it to podcast. So backslash blog. There is a spot where you guys can sign up to get any of our downloadable forms. Any of the forms that I talk about on the podcast, if you head on over there, thedentalyteam.com backslash blog. Like I said, it's super cool. One day maybe we'll get podcast. But for now, go to blog. And also at the bottom, if you're on the mobile view, 
at the bottom, there's a box of topics that you can submit. I do read those. So leave me some topics. Also, guys, as always, if this podcast is serving you and helping you, please, please, please go leave us a review. It would mean a ton to me. I read every single one of them. So please leave us a review. Share this with your friends. Sharing is caring. And I appreciate it more than you could ever know. All right, you guys. Sure love you. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll catch you next time on the Dental 18 Podcast. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental 18 Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye.